Hey, welcome gang. Uh, Lee's back for lesson three. three. Lesson three. Uh, how's it been? Yes, well, as uh, as I was telling you off camera, yeah. for personal reasons, it's been yeah. a difficult last couple of weeks. Uh, not least, actually, the fact that that because um, half because uh, my daughter's yeah. been on half term, mm -hmm. so I haven't been doing that sort of school run that gets me into work that little bit earlier every day. But yeah, yeah. Um, I've done a bit of everything. Good. So the the scale using the sort of the the, the thirds of the major scale, yeah. which. I have to be honest with you, anybody that follows me on right. Facebook will know I've had some frustrating, I've, I've, that whole uh, get, getting my head around the uh, the scale has, uh -huh. or whatever, you know, has yeah. been frustrating. And that's, I'd like to talk to you about, I, I want to know if there's anything I can do. Okay, what's been frustrating about it then? Let's get to the bottom of that straight away. So, well, so I'm playing, you know, I, 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 I you know, Yeah. And then back down again. And uh, let's, let's have a Okay, look. so back down yeah. going. Ah! That's it. Good. Now, when I. Uh, you know, that's, that is um, much better than it was two yes. weeks ago. Of course. But I'm still struggling with. I don't actually think my, even playing really slowly, I don't think my brain is really going consciously, put your finger there, put your finger there, put your finger there, the next note's gonna be this one, so right. get ready for it. Yeah. It all just feels like muscle memory, rather right. than, and actually harmonically, I think I'm, it, almost like, sometimes it doesn't really matter whether I've got my eyes open or my eyes closed. Yeah. Which yeah. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay. But I'm really, sometimes just, sometimes it just, it doesn't matter how slowly I try and do it, the fingers just don't do the right notes. Right. Uh, so. And then other times. Hang on, let me just get, get to, because yeah. there's a couple of important bits that I need to drill into here. Uh, is it the same mistake all the time? It will invariably just be, so, so the, the, the turnaround is always more tricky mm -hmm. so you know getting to the top e string and then coming back yeah. down again is is always one where you know it's almost like mm -hmm. my brain has to go right we're not going up anymore we're going down now and mm -hmm. it sort of once it gets down probably to the g string it's like i know where we're going now yeah. it's relatively okay. quick to finish the scale and i haven't really i don't even know that i can put my finger on what i feel that the sort of the roadblock is or even if there is a roadblock but it again for me all these scale exercises I really, really don't think that my brain is working fast enough to go, this is where you next need to put your finger. It's okay. almost just so like the repetitiveness of doing it yes. is just making it easier to do. Yes. But okay, I, so th this, let, let's, let's figure out, because this is important that, that you understand why it is that you're doing it. And it'll, uh, when you practice a scale up and down mm -hmm. a lot, your fingers get used to it. And when you... Don't think it'll happen by itself. Mm -hmm. But you don't want the scale to just go up and down because playing scales up and down mm -hmm. isn't very musical and it very rarely sounds amazing. When you practice something like practicing in the thirds, you need to think about it enough to get it right. But once you're through getting it right, you want to just be able to do it without having to think about it. So if I'm just trying to think if I've even got it. <laughs> Have I got a pick? Hang on. Probably I mean, got a spare one. Good luck. Uh, no, I've got, dude, I've got like a you've thousand, like a million in a, in a bag. They're just there, not, yeah. they're not within my reach this second. Yeah. And I need to go and find my favourite pick as well. But, so, look, if I'm practising thirds, I should be able to do it. And I can still talk to you about what's going on. Note that when it's turning around, I have to think yeah. about it, and I'll explain that in a sec. But the rest of it, I can actually, I can. It's kind of autopilot. Yeah. That, actually, I managed to turn it around that time. I did have to still. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. If I if I yeah. have to concentrate really hard on what I'm saying, it is falling mm -hmm. apart a little bit. But it, the general motion of it is, yeah. is happening by itself. That's kind of what you want. Mm -hmm. You want it to become 
ingrained enough that you don't have to think about it because when you're soloing, the idea isn't to think about it. Yeah. And this all, you know, I, I'm sure I've mentioned before that silly kung fu analogy that if I just show you a good way to do it, it doesn't help. Mm. You have to have done it over and over and over and over again, mm. consciously, before it becomes a reactive thing because yeah. that's what's good. And music... In, it, it, as an analogy, that's really effective because you don't want to be thinking, mm. play this lick, play that lick, do this thing. There are guys that play like that and yeah. um, more power to them if, that, if that's yeah. what works for them and that's how they're expressing. But I've got a feeling you feel a bit like me that it's not about that. It's just about letting yourself be free and things kind of happen. Yeah. You don't want to have to think about it too much. Yes. I mean, I think I probably play a bit of both of those styles yeah. and, and I would agree that the only downside to the only downside to really not thinking about it is you revert to type don't you and you end up going oh here's my here's my sort of fate but I, I think for so me a let's, balance let's, of let's both. go back to the language analogy yeah so if you're learning to speak French the yeah. idea is that you don't think about it that's the goal. Yeah. But I don't want to if I go to a shop to buy, to yeah. order a coffee I still have to go if I want something I have to say je voudrais and yeah. then I have to say the thing that I want, and the thing that I want is a coffee, and that's un café, and then yeah. I have to try to remember to say thank yeah. you. I have to think of it before I've even got in the shop. I'll be thinking yeah. about it on the footpath, yeah. and then I'll go into the shop and say it with a dodgy accent. But what I want is to just be able to casually walk into the yeah. shop and ask for whatever I want. Yeah. No, I, I would say so, the, the I was messing around with it with some... <laughs> some chords the other day just like a little chord sequence uh -huh. thing i was sort of and and what was great was prior to sort of playing i knew that anything that i played either in d major or in b blues uh -huh. pentatonic type thing yeah. was going to be okay yeah. and so that there's there's the sort of there is this like probably 20 percent thinking about going okay well that's kind of where i know i can pretty much everything will be yeah. okay but 80 percent is just listening and trying to yeah, but that's, hit something. That's a perfect point. Yeah, because so, I think if I, you're trying to push yourself mm. into doing something new, you're going to have to think about it. Yeah. I still do. There's enough... I've got enough vocabulary that I can play without thinking about it. But yeah. quite often, I have to think, particularly if I'm teaching and demonstrating something, I have to yeah. deliberately try and show this yeah. idea. So there's a little bit of the thinky brain mm. that's turned on for that anyway. And I think that's a good thing because it enables me to be thinking about doing something new or trying out some new idea yeah. to keep myself excited. Otherwise, I'll be bored and going, yeah. oh, I'm just playing the same crap that I always yeah. play and, and uh, I, get bored with myself. Going, going so, back to that thirds thing, mm -hmm. I would say that, that the two very visible feelings of, of, of um, you know, upsides, if you like, mm -hmm. was that the first three or four days of, of playing that, I felt a stretch in my hand that was unfamiliar. Good. But that's gone away now, so that's nice. a good thing. Yeah. And the straightforward major scale thing, even up and down yeah. picking, is so much easier now. Good. Than so Good. it's almost like what was the difficult thing before is has been has become the relatively easy thing. Good. And the new difficult thing is not as difficult as it was. I, I just as I said, I get frustrated with myself because when I play a wrong note, I'm not consciously playing the wrong note in that scale yeah. it's just that my brain has just decided that that's the note i'm going to play before it's had a chance for me to go no don't play that note. Okay. you know so I, that, I think a that's... little bit what you want to do in order because you you do want to try to not play bad notes that's that you should aim to not have any because if you do the wrong note you you're setting up the programming wrong yeah that's why i was in the first question i ask is is it the same mistake because if it's the same mistake each time then you've got some programming issue that you need to kind of get yeah. rid of, right? Let's play it one more time. Volume up. Let's hit, have a listen. Now, just I want you to play it whenever you play anything for me that you've played mm -hmm. at home. I want you to play it slower than what you do at okay. home. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that you there's a better chance of getting it right. Okay. I was going to say, the first one's always a fluke. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Good turnaround. Mm. That was good. Solid rhythm. The fingering is all good. The, the only point that I'd say on the fingering is just to watch the... When you do that little figure, skipping it is difficult. Yeah. See if you can put it down a little flatter and roll it onto the yeah. top. Get used to that, yeah. the idea of rolling Funnily the enough, my, my third thing, and I'm consciously, I'm pretty sure on the last thing you said to try not to do that with the third one. So I'm uh -huh. conscious that I'm sort of... Oh, hang on, I'm doing... It, it almost... Fit. There's no point where the third finger does that. All I mean is that at some, I think what it is, I'm leaving the third finger on the previous string uh -huh. and then finding at the point where I need to go over, uh -huh. uh, there isn't time to do the skip. So it's uh -huh. sort of going like that ra rather than... I understand a, what you mean. Yeah. I, I, In I, that case, yeah. I you should be, be using fingertips finger. all the time yeah. unless you've got this thing, the roll where it's on the same fret and then, then you have to. So the good thing, the, the one thing that's not... Going the going right is the alternate picking. Is it's, it not? It's it's, it's it's a mixture. A mixture, yeah. And it's not consistent each time. Yeah, right. It's because I'm not. It's I'm not thinking about that at the moment. It, it's okay. It's, all the brain power is at yeah, this yeah. end, not which, this end. Which which is okay. I'm yeah. gonna I'm yeah. gonna that, you've got a free pass on the pick and hand for the for the yeah. time being. I want you to. I don't think that there's a problem there, and I don't think you should be feeling frustrated mm -hmm. about it. I think you're doing really well, making really good progress. I think it's important for you to realize that for every single person that learns stuff, you encounter feelings of, it's, it's like a little pathway where you feel like, oh yeah, I can do this, this is cool. Mm. And then you practice a bit more and you're like, yeah, I'm getting better at this, this is great. And then you're like, oh God, it's shit, I'm so shit, I'm hopeless at learning this, I can't do it, you know, I never, and yeah. that's the phase where a lot of people stop, but it's just a phase and mm. you have to push through it and then you'll come out yeah. to the other and go, no, now I've got it, it's really useful. Yeah. And it's, it's pushing through that bit of self-doubt and feeling yeah. like it's not going well. It's almost the mark of the guys that get better yeah. because the people who at that point go, yeah, I'm, I'm not cut out for doing this or it's too hard or yeah. I'm not clever enough or I'm not good enough or I don't have enough time to practice, all of which is bollocks, mm. right? You do have enough practice, you're yeah. doing really well, yeah. you're te totally talented enough to do it. It's just the fear. We all have it. I get I get it too still. Mm. I still, when I'm learning tunes, I feel like it's rocking. Oh, yeah, this is really good. It's working yeah. really well. But there's a certain point where you, the, the difficulty is kind of like, I can do, I can do it, mm. but the realization of what it's going to take to do it really well is the thing that causes us to go, yeah. oh, God, I'm so crap. Because there is a difference between just being able to do it yeah. and doing it really well. They're different, I think, right? I think the, the exercise itself is phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, the, it's, the, it, it's it's absolutely, you know, it, it it feels like it's moving your fingers. The dexterity mm -hmm. here, so I, I, and I and I like to be honest with you. For, for me, again, who, who's um, still probably snatching at practice mm -hmm. quite regularly, particularly this last couple of weeks. Been lots of, the, to it. Hello, this is you. such a cute. Dog off camera here. I don't know if we're allowed to. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's Hello. super cute. She. She. Oh. Anyway. Um, so phenomenal. Uh, it's it's great, and I and I genuinely do. Um, I appreciate having. Uh, I, I wouldn't even mind one or two more of those kind of uh, exercises to just be able to go. Oh look, there's a. I've just pressed the uh, like build yeah, report yeah. button uh -huh. on my computer and I know it always takes two minutes to build that report so it's just yeah. like I can get like you know just do something for two minutes like that cool. so that is I'll give you another one yeah I so, mean I, I would like that we'll do, we're gonna do so we'll stick with thirds uh, uh, again so now you're gonna be alternating your practice between mm -hmm. thirds straight so yeah. just playing the just scale the straight up and down yeah. and then there's a couple of options that we can do the one that I always found a good one is what was called four in a line. So playing a sequence of four notes up off okay. each scale degree. Yeah. So you're starting on that one. And then you, that's it. And then you start on the second degree of the scale and play out four again. And start on the third note. Fourth note. That's it. Good. Good. Uh, that's it. That was... Good. Now, here's the trick, just to, to, when you're having to think now, oh, what note did I last yeah. start on? It's down a third. So once you go up here, it would be like, that's a third below, if you're going. <laughs> There's a little bit awkward there with a the little finger that you probably just 
sol. Okay. Again, this is a really nice musical little yeah. sequence. It's quite a nice idea, especially, again, I think it's partly to do with that thirds thing. That's it. <laughs> this is the weird thing where your brain now goes, which one are we doing? Yeah, it's yeah, like, okay. I'm going to play a bit of yeah. both. That's, That's it. it. Okay, now hang on, just one second. When you're practicing it, mm. rather than going... Yeah, yeah. You want to keep try it. Try and do it slow enough that you can think about it. And it mm. might be this slow. No, it's slower. Second note. Now you're like, okay, the third note is it. I'm looking for this note. There we go. Yeah. That slowly is much better than the stoppy starting. Yeah, thing. yeah, okay. Good. I just still go a bit slower. Yeah, because if you can do the thirds one, because that that one, the, the what, yeah, yeah. what are you calling this one? Four this one, and a line. Four in a line. That is definitely easier than uh, the thirds one. Uh huh. Um, it's o it's only easier because you've done the thirds because one. you've done the if thirds I'd done one. the fourth four in a line percent. first, it wouldn't. It, you'd the, probably be looking at the third again. The, oh, the thirds was, yeah. one. I, I said I, I did it. I put a couple of things on my Facebook page over uh -huh. the last couple of weeks of, of me. I just set the camera up, going right. Come on, let's do it like that. Right. And it's just like. You know, you just you get like you're you're near you you almost done a perfect run and you cock something up. It's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn it. like that. Um, but but and yeah. everything that people saw on Facebook, the little two minutes that I put on Facebook, yeah. was actually the two minutes out of probably twenty minutes of trying to do it and getting it even more. Yeah, right. but it's just like, uh, but it's it that's a really Good. that is a monster exercise. So we're gonna have. I want you to do one more two week block where we're doing yep. still in pattern one. Yeah. And then next session, I want to start introducing pattern two and the some of the logic problems that you're going to encounter because in pattern one, especially at the moment, uh, pattern one is not related to your blues playing, right? It's yep. a very separate thing. And I think that you'd either be playing in pattern one using that sort of stuff yep. or you'd be playing blues stuff. Yeah. But I need to find a what mm. I'm going to, what I'll show you next lesson is mm. how we combine those two things so that you can start using that stuff in a blues context. But I, I want was, one more session. Maybe not so much in a blues thing, but that, that you know, playing the sort of, uh, the, the, you know, where you... Oh, okay. Oh, where, where was I? I, I think I was, I, was I was certainly picking up those six notes uh -huh. instead, you know. I think you know that you you can. I mean, that there are phrases within pattern one. No, that hundred percent. You can kind of. It's the same notes. It is the same notes. Yeah, you're so totally right. So what what mm. what what we're aiming for, and I'd like you to get there, say, within a year, mm -hmm. but it's probably not going to be much before that. Is the freedom to not have to think about being in this box or that box yeah. to go? I want to play this. A note. Or. Or what, it, yeah. It's just a sound, and you yeah. just find a way of making the sound happen. Yeah. You have to go through the boxes bit, because there's no other way of doing it. And if you don't understand what the sounds are in each box, you can't be free of them. And yeah. it's, it's, it's a bit of a ball, but it, you, you, it's valuable, you, yeah. and, and you're doing the right stuff. So that's, that's thing one. So we've got four in line. I'll send you a, a, yeah. a tab of, of doing that. Um, notes on the neck. How'd you get Yes. For, well, again, I, I kind of, uh, I think so. I mean, I think I'm sort of going, okay, well, you said C we started yep. off with, didn't you? So, so just nice and slow, don't rush it. First okay. finger only, first finger only, first oh, finger first. only. That's it. Good. Oh, hang on. 
Oh, God damn it. This is because oh, right. of the pressure Wait. of the camera being on there. Okay. Super. Uh, so we're we doing uh, C, C. Good. C. Excellent. Uh, C. Good. Uh, come on, Anderton. I've totally lost it now, haven't I? Think of tuning. Where did we even get to? Oh, that's right. That's it. Annoying. Back down. Okay, so Slow, dude. It's fine. Hang on, let me write. Uh, good. Okay. So slow, but yeah. Don't I, worry. Okay. This for most people. Yeah. This is really, really difficult, it's and it was difficult for me as well. Yeah. It's just a thing you're going to have to put, I'm going to push you through it because no, you if you know the notes on the fretboard, yeah. so much stuff opens up. All of the yeah. idea of being able to learn a lick in lots of different places, being able to move a chord, being able to add a note to a chord, yeah. there's so much that opens up, particularly if you study a bit of music theory at the same time, yeah. so you understand what's going on. It's, it's like the golden combo, a little bit of music theory yeah. notes on the neck, a lot of stuff opens up. Do, do, you, do you advocate any kind of you know, calling out the notes as you're playing stuff or playing even just chromatically and calling out the notes? No, Not really. No. That, that exercise that you've got to find a note and going through is, mm -hmm. is the the best one that you can do when you've got the instrument in your hand. Yeah. I'm going to give you one more. Um, so, uh, how, did you do the G and the... the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, it's... Okay, let's uh, have a... Wh which ones did you do? G, uh, C, G and D. Okay. Uh, that's it. Again, from the beginning. Good. Um, why can't I remember where this one is? Uh, That's it. Um, no. It's fine, isn't it? Okay, this was better. <laughs> In fairness, when I was practicing in the week, I so think it's just you have to a couple. Of, you need to remember that things will never be as good in front of me mm -hmm. as they are at home. That's I don't know. It's the same for no. me when I go to see teachers yeah. and I play in front of them. I'm, I'm it's like oh, it, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly. I, I think it's, it's not it's, even nerves. There's just yeah. some. There's some other element going on. I there, think but. that bit of it, I, just, I haven't as yet really worked out like a practice routine that feels like it's embedding it. I think it just feels like I'm still having to go, what's the relative position of the, if I want to play G, you know, if I know that that's a G and and I'm sort of, maybe that one's gone in. Yeah. This one I'm still going, well, I know that's gonna be the, that's fine. that one. Yeah. Then I know I've got, I've got the uh, octave, because yeah. that is the G string. Yeah. And then as soon as I get to the B, B string, I am, I am going, Oh, hang on a second, where was this one again? This one was here, so this one must be here. Yeah. And then of course I suppose top okay. here I know it's gonna be the same as the bottom. This is normal. <gasps> That's what you have to do, but yeah. it'll start to, what you end up with is you just, you kind of instinctively know, it makes for little patterns mm. around the neck. Have you... Yeah, maybe that's what I've not... I haven't seen that pattern yet. Maybe I just need to look for it more. Okay, I'm going to suggest you do something else. So, what I want you to do... Uh, in fact, I'm going to send the it D, to you. D's, um, D is easier for some reason for me. Okay. Maybe it's just, again, the relative positions of things make more sense. Okay, what we're going to do... So, there's a couple of pointers that I can give you here that are really interesting. First of all, this part of the neck is the bit where most people lose it. Right. right. This this mm -hmm. little section around, I don't know, seventh to the tenth yeah. fret on the thinnest. Yeah. These middle three strings. First one that's really nice and easy to remember is B and E. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a to be or not to be. Right. So B and E. Right in the smack bang in the yeah. middle of the the complex area is having a B and an E. Yeah. yeah. That automatically gives you C and F as well because they're both one semitone higher than okay. So B and E and C and F. Yeah. But to be or not to be right at the up at the ninth fret. Yeah. Okay. You've got as well. 
a B, E, A, and D. You've got a bead, B, E, A, D, at okay. the seventh fret from the thinnest couple of strings. Seven bead. Yeah, I seven to, bead. I need right? to. So, what I want you to, st what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a map of yeah. all of the notes on the neck. Yeah. I want you to spend a bit of time looking at it. Yeah, I mean that might and just And look be... at the patterns and mm. see if you can th see things like this because there's another couple that I I haven't. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you one more. Fad, F A D. There's a fad at the tenth fret on the thinnest three strings. Right. It's a skateboarding fad. Yeah, F A D. Yeah? yeah. So if you can look for some other ones like that where there's little yeah. uh, patterns to it that you might think that you can remember easily, yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. So. A little bit of time just looking at it. Yeah. Right? Um, and I'm just I, I'm, I'm gonna type this up and give it to you, but I'm just making notes for myself. The other thing that I want you to try and do is when you just said before, oh, I get these things where I get two minutes or whatever mm -hmm. and I and I yeah. I don't have to, I can either grab a guitar or I can yeah. do something else. Yeah. I want you to uh, imagine in your mind the notes on the fifth fret from the thickest string to the thinnest string. What are they? Don't look at the guitar, tell me. So close your eyes. A. Yeah. D. Good. G. Good. Uh, B flat? No. No. Uh, so this is the fifth fret yeah. on the G on the yes. D string. On the G string. Oh, did I give you the Yeah. It was D, it was G on the D so string. A. Yeah. Sorry, we start with so A. D. Yeah. G. Yeah. That's right. So now we're on the G string. Yeah. And so that has got to be C. Good. Uh, then E, then yeah. A again. Good. So doing that is mm. also really, really good because it yeah. makes you build a memory map in your mind. Same thing on the seventh fret, thicker string to thinner string. Oh, no, that's brutal. No, it's I not, because I just it, told you four of them. Actually, you did B, didn't you? Yeah. So, okay, well, in that case, it's B, <laughs> D. A, D. And then the last two. G on the seventh fret has got to be... Uh, um, What's the fifth fret? The fifth fret's an E, isn't it? Right, so, so it's going to be F sharp. Right, and the thinner string uh, is B. Same as the thicker string. Yes. Okay, so I want you to try and do where the yeah. dots are. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I want you to do the third fret, fifth fret, and seventh. Fret. Not in, worry about in the my fret. mind. In your mind, just going and just go in that direction for now. G, C, yeah, F, yeah. Um, B flat. Yeah, good. Um, what string was that then? That was, that was a G string. Yeah, so you know, so you're on the B string. Uh, so that's got to be uh, D. D. Yeah, of course. G. D. Yeah. G, yeah. So you're going to do that in 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 your mind, okay? Yeah. So neck across. Uh, that's a, okay. That's good. I can even do that in my sleep, can't I? Exactly. Insomnia. You can, when, when when your missus is watching Corey for the fourth <laughs> time, you're like, oh no, I can't handle that one. Um, yeah, you can start okay. playing that. Eventually, you want to be able to go up and down off any fret, but yeah. that it's a bit more complicated. So if yeah. you just go for third, fifth, and seventh fret down, yeah, yeah. but be able to do it, yeah, know, off the cuff by next okay. time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, transcribing. You had a go at it. Okay, so, so you what did gave, you find? You gave me an Albert King, I don't know if it was an actual Albert King track, but an inspired by it's, Albert it's, King It's me track. copying Albert King's oh, okay. style as best I can. Um, and I used the transcribe software, the software yeah. uh, and typically was slowing it down to sort of 60-70% of yeah, the speed to kind of do it. And I kind of got probably 30 seconds worth of the track. That's awesome. Uh, but as you can see, my transcription is sort of breaking it into where the natural pauses in the lips that's fine. are rather yeah. than that's you fine. Know, like so by bar or let's, something. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. So when you write out a tab, when you get a tab on the internet, you don't get the rhythm with it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. When you write down, I, I think it's a really good idea to learn how to write down a rhythm and it's yeah. something I'll do with you in about six months time. Yeah. Right. First of all, you need to get your transcription skills enough to get the notes right. And you will learn the rhythm by listening to it because you will have had to have listened to it a load of times in order to be able to figure it out yeah. anyway. So you'll probably know instinctively the rhythm anyway. Yeah. Hey, can you play the first part? Well, so the, again, I've got my 13 bend into 15. Yeah. Well, it's, it's almost, I, I wasn't even sure whether just to start on the 15 because it's like, that's the okay. sort of first note. So yeah. it's, it's a, 
Uh, that's good. Like, I can't. And then and there's uh, what was it? Is uh, I can't think of yeah, the track. That's went, it. But... That's it. And then it was something fifteenth and yeah. Excellent. And then you got the dyad. Well done. Uh, Excellent. Good. Fourteenth on the wrong string there, doesn't, but anyway. Doesn't matter. And then it does. It did. The last bit was when it, it did go down to. You're doing fantastic. So stick with doing. I want. Yeah, yeah. Keep going with this solo. You have no idea the benefits this is going to give you yet. This, you you yeah. won't. You won't have realised it, but already just even that much has probably lifted your guitar playing game considerably. <laughs> right? There's all sorts of things that you're listening to. The dynamics, the way it's played. When you said I wasn't sure if to start on that because it's so quick. Yeah. You won't have bothered listening at that level before, and yeah. the more you do it you start to discover a new level of beauty in the music that you're yeah. listening to because you can hear things that you wouldn't have heard before. Yeah. Little inflections in stuff. And rhythmically, you were doing it pretty well, actually. Yeah, you... it's, it's, it's the, the, the track. It, I think one of the things that I, <laughs> I think should have done... Don't hey, need to go for a toilet in a second. Um, but, yeah. That's all right. Well, one, of the, one of the things I, I leapt straight in and uh, sh I, what I should have done was familiarise myself with the track Yes, for half a dozen times, or whatever, and then, yeah. but I didn't. All I did was literally I loaded it straight into transcribe, and, and I'm literally just going right. Let's start. Right. And I, and and in hindsight, um, well, maybe there's no better or worse way, but I I think it it would have I, I would have felt like if but it's a bit like starting to do a jigsaw, isn't it? Without first of all looking at what does the whole jigsaw yeah, look yeah. like, if, you know exactly. Um, so that that's something that I've. Uh, all of my transcribing courses mm. will tell you first before you start transcribing to it listen yeah. to it 10 times and yeah. that's i still do it yeah. Yeah. so if i'm i'm just about to tr have a go at transcribing this ridiculously horrible jazz intro uh, that i've first heard yesterday so this morning while yeah. i was doing my admin e account stuff yeah. i just put it on repeat and i listen to it over yeah, and over, over again over. while i'm doing some yeah. other stuff just because that familiarity you'll only get through repeated listens yeah. right so Definitely do that again. Stick it in your car if you're going yeah, to see yeah. it. You know, yeah. No, I've got, it, I've got it on my phone now, so I can yeah. just listen to it in the car. So but it's, yeah, that's a good it's, idea. Um, it, and that, that transcribe software as well. I don't, yeah. I don't know if there's other similar stuff mm -hmm. that slows stuff down without changing yeah. the pitch. Again, that was really... There was one, that last lick, where the, first, the everything at the beginning starts up here. Yeah, yeah. And then that last lick where clearly... It, well, at least I think it does. And there's one thing that I would... I personally wouldn't play, which was which was uh, where the run was, uh, you know, so like, uh, where, which perhaps I might do, but here, here's, it sort of, it, it jumps, I'm pretty sure it jumps from that E string, or certainly the A string, but back down to the D string, and then, so instead of coming, is it, and it was like, that's interesting, because I don't really play Something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. So, the one, th the one thing that you missed there is that second note is on a different string. Exactly. So right, it goes... so it's not a... So it's not that, that... So it's not... It's here. Yeah. So, it's probably, yeah, when you listen you to it the, again the, now the, the second time... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, I want you to just have a listen to that... Um, when you get back to just that one note to hear that it's played on a different string now that i've told you and you go back and listen to it you'll start to hear it in other places and other times as well because it's a really common yeah. blues thing is yeah. this playing the one note because you can't you can get a vibrato on that it's, but it, it's, harder, it's nowhere it? near the same as you can get there yeah yeah so just keep an ear out yeah. for that but dude it, that's really good so there we are awesome oh well, that's cool i'm pleased it's because that was um yeah, I didn't feel I, I hadn't until I started doing the transcription. It really hadn't struck me um, just the, the fact that with you know when you when you are looking at a piece of written music, not that I can read music, mm -hmm. but quite often, quite often I'll see a piece of tab where it's 
it's tabbed underneath the mm -hmm. written music. And the written music gives you much more of a sense of mm -hmm. rhythm. Yes. Tab Whereas tab is, is just a sort of a... Uh, but it's yeah. the same like if you go to one of those websites where they give you free tabs, it's mm. written like this without mm. rhythms. Mm. You know, that's, so that's you're, really, you're having to really listen to the track at the same but time. But you've got to be it. listening yeah. to the track anyway. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this is yeah. one of the things that kids these days don't realise is they get a tab like that and they don't listen to the original recording enough. I had a student once come who'd learned uh, House of the Rising Sun from an internet chord thing but it was completely the wrong chord and he hadn't listened to it enough to know that it was wrong so he was playing the first chord as a major instead of a minor and it was just like oh dude did you not listen you know whereas it's a C is it in his defense it doesn't sound like that horrible it's actually kind of a, a bit cool it's a bit Nirvana-y kind yeah, of it's hipster cool. but um yeah, but the fact that he hadn't noticed was like, oh man, you gotta, you have to listen to those things. You know, it's a, it's a big yeah. deal. So transcribing, that's great. Continu I'll just carry continue on doing on, that. Track. Continue on it's that not, one. Uh, I thought it was going to be longer. Actually, that was the other downside of not listening to the whole thing all the way uh -huh. through. If I'd have realised it was only a two-minute long track, I, I, I might have, you know, I just, I probably could have done another, you know, four yeah, or five yeah. licks. Uh -huh. of it, but uh, anyway, it's all Stick good. With it. it's all You're going to find as you do transcribing from this pack, because they're all the classic licks and they're they're genuine licks it's not like i made them up they're yeah. albert king licks yeah. that i've just rearranged yeah albert king was a huge influence on mm. stevie ray vaughan eric clapton and everyone else so when you go to go back because i want you to start doing clapton solos yeah when you go back to doing clapton ones you'll be like oh that's that lick just, that was in that you know, pack you know it was really yeah. awful as i was listening to all, as i was listening to because i put just an out some albert king stuff uh -huh. on anyway and if you if you weren't to know the lineage of all uh -huh. these players, you would just go, he's just a bad Stevie Ray Vaughan <laughs> impressionist. <laughs> it's like, it's so bad saying that, isn't it? Oh, and then obviously what you realise is... The, the blues gods will do something yeah. bad to you, but that's, that's <laughs> bad. That's very bad. Okay. Um, one thing that I've remembered that I'd forgotten to talk to you about the first after the first week was the Blues Lick book. Okay. Uh, that you were supposed, that was on your practice routine, but we just somehow completely oh, totally, neglected it. Totally forgot that. Um, okay. So... Uh, I'm going to put it back down, actually. So what even is um, that then? Okay, did we talk about that last yeah. time? In the first week, we didn't. I forgot to oh, mention okay. it last time. So uh, you need to get just uh, using this tab paper. You're mm -hmm. going to write down all of the licks that you know. Oh, yeah. we did talk about that. We did talk and about. I never did any so of that. just because what it'll do is it'll show you the words that you know. Yeah. We'll we'll sit down and play them together. And then we'll look at ways that we can expand on them, change yeah. them, where they come from, what the harmonies are used, if there's some that are breaking out of the pentatonic, oh, how are they doing? So just like you've done here, we don't worry about rhythms. Oh, yeah, no, we don't need anything. Take long. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> your, hum your, humble your humbleness is nice, but it's not necessary. Okay. Uh, so we've got the scale, we've got the, the notes on the neck, we've got the transcribe, we've got the lip. But what was the other thing that we had that we did last time? I can't remember. What was was on your practice routine? Oh, you've got oh, you've got the. No, I haven't filled it in. Oh. I've just got it. What it is? Uh, oh, and it was just more playing of Little Wing. Uh huh. Which, yeah, it's fine. I mean, I, to be totally honest with you, I can't, I kind of really, uh, I focused largely on that, uh, that sort of B. That he says doing it yeah. unbelievably badly there, um, because that's still the only part that that uh, I even I even went. Can I just play this a different way to so you know? Can yeah. I sort of? Can I just sort of do the? And is there anything wrong with doing that? Um, I don't think so. No, there isn't. Yeah, right? I mean, so look, there's a couple of schools of this that are worth understanding, so you can decide what it is that you want to get out of mm -hmm. learning something. So I always think it's really important that you ask why you should do a particular thing. And mm -hmm. it's something that I would like you to do. If I try, if I say you should do it like this, mm -hmm. I want your first instinct is to be why. Why yeah. should I do that? Because if you understand it really well, you're more likely to do it, you'll do a better job of it, and you'll understand what are the, the reason for you practicing it. So yeah. Little Wing, why are we practicing Little Wing? What's I, the point? I like the song. And okay, just, I like the song. So what mm. would be the... Why do you like the song? And what would you like to get out of this study of it? I suppose to be able to, to, be able to play it. And just... Right, so do, do you, does it matter to you if you play it exactly like the record or if you just do it like near, as, near uh, enough? Right. Or would you like to mm. be able to do your version of it? Yeah, I, I, actually, I actually think that 
we talked about this before, I actually do prefer probably other people's versions mm -hmm. of Little Wing more than okay. I like the original one. So, like but I, Stevie Ray's or other, yeah, also, other, other the, versions? Yeah, all loads. I, you know, the, the thing I mentioned, there was a, there's quite a, not jazzy is the wrong word, but there's, there's, there's a Sting mm -hmm. version of it where a guitar player called Hiram Bullock plays it. And again, it's, it's a bit more... I don't know, Sting, you know, uh -huh. like, you know, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. that, what, what would you call his style of music, yeah. you know, that sort of pop jazz, Poppy you know, jazz. Sort yeah, of, yeah. Okay. Um, but he, anyway, but I, I, I did want to, a lot, a lot of the stuff, um, I think on the, certainly the, the, the Sting version, the chords, are, uh, the inversions of the chords are interesting, mm -hmm. but there isn't quite so much of the, the sort of the licks in between. Okay. That's on there, but what, I, what, I was what, just, where will I find that version? It's either on Dream of the Blue Turtles or Nothing Like the Sun. It's one of the. I think it's Nothing Like the Sun. Nothing Like the Sun is the album. Uh huh. Um, it's just I guess if you put Sting, Little Wing, it'll, yeah, it'll yeah. come up. Uh, but it's more this sort of. Oh, no, definitely not that. One. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's just got a slightly different, uh, more laid-back kind of vibe to it. It's less sort what of guitar-centric. What, what I'll do is I'll have a listen to it, see what's going on, and then suggest perhaps we do some transcribing of that. But I want to make sure that you're not having to transcribe too much stuff that you don't that you, that might just be a roadblock, basically. That's good. Okay, I'm going to leave it on there for one more session, yeah. little wing. Yeah, and then uh, for the good people next time, I'd like you to give me a rendition of it, right? Straight through. We'll set up the nice out. Little wing. Little wing. Yeah. Little wing. So next time, the, the Hendrix one, okay. just the intro. But I'd like to hear you play it through, and then I want to spend a little bit of time talking about jamming on it, so that if you do play it really well, if you go, well, I can do little wing, and you're at a, a jam party at Nam next year. And they go, okay, let's have a jam on it. And it comes to the solo. I don't yeah. want you to brick it and suddenly not know how to yeah, solo. Yeah, so I, I want to do that. I mean, finally, I, yeah, cool. I mean, the solo is when you just go, everything's in E blues, isn't it? Or yeah, pretty much. It, it, it can be, but there's a lot of nice things that you can take out from oh, that to cool. make the changes that's a little bit more yeah. fun as well. But so, yeah, that, so that's um, that. Um, I, I think even on your video, I think you say Hendrix plays the... the uh, yeah. The, the this B here yeah. with this finger. Yeah. And I and I wonder and I wonder if that does allow you to then sort of go. It does. You know, does. not that I've tried uh, yeah. to. So, but obviously. So I might. Hard. But, but even just. You know, what well, I didn't I didn't play it badly there, but but not feeling like I've got to play that lick with the rest of the chord. Or even not down. playing. La, da, da, ba, ba, da. Maybe you go. Um, that's true. You don't have, yeah, to, have to have the. Uh, it, it probably sounds better it. to play it simpler and not mess it up. Exactly. Than it, than to, to try and play it accurately. But as well with, it the, with the, the, all of these things, we're, we're, I haven't gone on too much about this with you yet, but the rhythm is the really important thing. If you balls the rhythm up, it, it, it's all gone. So what's really important is you simplify it enough that the rhythm doesn't go wrong. That's the key thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a, such a great, it's such a great guitar piece, that one. You know, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, you know, just all the versions are great on that. I don't think I've ever really heard a, a It's a bad wonderful, version. wonderful tune. Um, okay, where's your other, pra where's the practice sheet? Let's just check it off. What, what, with absolutely nothing filled in at all? I know. Is it, this is like my standard okay, so uh, yeah. homework. Um, does it may just go a little wing lick book? There's something that we just talked about. Oh, the theory course. How are you getting on with the theory on the website? Have you had a chance to do any of that? I read, um, I did start reading it. You're totally right. This is my week one practice routine because I can't remember yeah. why, but week two, I don't think I brought one away with me. But uh, what did, did I read on that? How far did you get? I think you said, emailed me once and said, Oh, I'm at grade two or something like that I, I read everything that i needed to do until there was a login like all the free stuff okay uh and but I, you've got the did we sort the login yeah you i think you did done. i think okay. we did i'm not i'm i haven't utilized your online resource much okay uh, have so, a go with the theory thing because it's really it's the, along with the learning the notes on the net I was, that's probably the takeaway it's one of those kind yeah. of little key bits yeah. that once you understand the theory behind a scale, say, and how it works, yeah. or what the notes are in a chord, 
and if you know the notes on the neck and you know that the notes in a chord in A major chord are A, C, sharp and E, yeah. you can suddenly just find all of those things everywhere. And it, it's a real, that's one of the most important pieces that I think that you'll feel much better about your general musicianship if those two parts yeah. are connected up. So right. we definitely want the, the notes in, grade three is where we start with the, the major scale yeah. and how the, the formula for the major scale, how we work out what the notes are in every key, yeah. therefore what the chords are in every key. Yeah. And the more familiar you get with it, the more you just start to remember that C has no sharps and flats and the key of G has one sharp and it's F sharp. And that you, you just, they're, they're little things, but yeah. they'll make, they start to make a bigger difference. You'll start to recognize chord sequences. You'll start to recognize keys better, especially when, it, when you tie that together with the notes on the neck. It's a real big deal. Yeah? So right. that's, that's it. You, so you've, that got six, you've got six, six things, things now God, on your routine. Such a hard teacher. God, so, yes. I'm so not Lee. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to recap, you've got your four major scale, yeah. thirds, straight up and down, and four in a line. Yeah? yeah, you've got notes C, G, D. You've done before. I want you to add in A and E. Yeah, I want you to look at the, the note map, which I'll email you in a second, yeah. and I'll put it up on the website for those of you that are following along at home. Um, and when you've got a spare couple of minutes at home, just working on third fret, fifth fret, and seventh fret, the notes straight across from thicker string to thinner yeah. string. Yeah, continue with the transcribing as much as you can. Yeah, interesting. Just as a side note, if somebody came to me and said. I only w I want to practice guitar, but I only ever want to practice one thing. Mm -hmm. it's kind of a dumb analogy, but the thing that I would get them doing is transcribing. Yeah. Right. It it's the most powerful stuff that you can do. Yeah. And the guys that all of the guys that I know that are really good have all done tons of it. Yeah. And there's a few guitar players around that I know that do a lot of transcribing for their work, and they've got really really good because they have to do yeah. loads of transcribing. It really is a killer thing. So. If, if you only had one thing to do, if, you, if you've got, right, this week I've only got this one hour, yeah. spend it transcribing. It'll, be, it'll do will. you the most good out of everything. It, yeah. Right now it still feels really steep. Yeah. But if you can mm. stick with me for this transcribing thing for until Christmas time, probably by Christmas, the, the difficulty chore part will be gone and you'll be like, Oh, I want to learn this track. Oh, I'm going to do this Stevie Ray Vaughan song. I'm going to do this Captain song. And, and you'll find that there'll be so much stuff that you want to do that there just won't be enough time, right? So try and stick with this little bit where it just feels, for most people, really steep. Yeah. Yeah, like, oh, God, this is a bit of a slog. Stick with it. Uh, we've got the Blues Lick book. Yeah. Just, this is not so important. So, and I don't expect you in one week to have done every one. But if you could do, let's say, at least 10. Yeah, so 10, 10, 10, 10 you've got, dude, you must have 50 licks, right? So 10 licks that you, that you play regularly, right? I can, I can probably tell you what your 10 <laughs> licks are already. You probably can. But let's see if you can find them yourself. The way to do it is to put on your, uh, you know, in your looper yeah. and then just play yeah. and go, almost certainly the ones yeah. that you play first are going to be your 10 licks. Yeah. Right? Uh, and then continue a little wing practice and then when you've got a chance again music theory you've got the login yeah. when you've got a chance at work and you've got half an hour free yeah. or whatever just get stuck into doing as much of it as you can make sense happy days dude week three always a pleasure good um hope cool. you're enjoying it Keep yeah up. we'll try and approach <laughs> the lesson the the questions on the on on youtube as well